Привет, друзья! G'day guys, welcome to another Soviet Lens Review. Today, we are going to be pitting six 135mm lenses up against each other to find out, once and for all, who made the best 135mm lens. So, let's get into it. Okay guys, so first off, some uh, little caveats or disclaimers. Uh, we've actually got six lenses here that all can reach an equivalent focal length of 135mm, uh, but we have two zoom lenses here. And the focus of today's video, I wanted to take a look at really the sharpness, the resolution, and the resolving power of all of these 135mm lenses. Uh, to start off with that, so this review will really focus on that. Uh, we will throw in a few other comparisons, of course, but at the end of the day, what most people want to know is how sharp is each of these lenses? So let's run through the uh, competitors that we've got today, starting uh, from my left here. This is the newest lens in the lineup. This is the Tamron uh, Giga Zoom. It is 28 mils through to 200 mils. It's a big zoom made by Tamron. It does have autofocus. Uh, it's got some aspherical elements in it. Uh, although it is a very large focal range for it to cover, so I'm not too sure how well it will do, even though it is the newest, uh, the most recently produced out of all of these lenses. And we're going to be shooting that at 135 mil, of course. Next up, we have the Hanamex 135mm F2. Nice Japanese made uh, 135mm there, made in 1973. And of course, we have the Jupiter 11 uh, F4 135mm made in 1968 at the KMZ plant, uh, at the KOMZ plant rather, I should say. And another Soviet competitor here, we've got the Jupiter 37A, the Jupiter 37A, made in 1979, also at KOMZ. Then we've got another Japanese competitor here. This one is the Tamron F2.8 135mm. And last but not least, we have another zoom. This one is the Hanamex uh, 70 to 140mm auto zoom. And yeah, we'll see how this one stacks up when it is zoomed into about 135 mil. So guys, we've been introduced to all of our 135 mil competitors here. And uh, well, I'll just say that the results were really interesting. Uh, what we did to test this is, uh, test all these was put them up against each other with a sharpness chart to use as a bit of a benchmark. So I took some photos using all of these six lenses, uh, took photos of that sharpness chart and put them into my custom uh, custom program that I've written for paint.net that effectively uh, using similar algorithms to modern focus peaking algorithms spits out a sharpness value for each of these lenses at each of their aperture uh, stops. So let's get into some of the initial pictures before we uh, divulge all of the results. Uh, now, starting off with the Tamron, the big Tamron zoom uh, 28 to 200 actually didn't do quite as badly as I thought it might. Obviously, it's a massive focal range to cover, but uh, you can really tell that this is a slightly more modern design. You know, everything's not super blurry. It does still have some resolution in the center. Chromatic aberration fringing is this lens's weakness, and it certainly does display that. But overall, it's not the worst I've seen. So, Tamron did pretty decently. Now, next up, the Hanamex. Hanamex, of course, not necessarily a, a brand known for its uh, um, quality. Hanamex sort of like a cheaper Japanese third-party brand. This is a Hanamex 2.8 135mm, again, manufactured in the 70s, so uh, really not using a particular modern lens design. And that did come through in the photos as well. It wasn't particularly sharp. Uh, you can see that here. Um, yeah, I mean, it does have f2.8 f2 aperture, so you're going to get a little bit more light in than some of the Soviet lenses here, uh, but the Hanamex, really not so impressive. Next up, we've got the Jupiter 11. 
Now, uh, Jupiter 11 is a very, very old design. The Soviets were producing this design uh, in the late 1940s. Uh, now, of course, it does come originally from a uh, Carl Zeiss design, Carl Zeiss Sonner design, uh, but the Soviets had to make it using their glass, had to recalculate a few uh, bits and bobs here and there to manufacture it themselves. Now, the Jupiter 11 really surprised me in this test. Um, I love this lens. I've used it before, but you can really see that um, when it comes to sharpness, Jupiter is kind of looking like the one to beat. Now, the other Jupiter, the Jupiter 37A, uh, again, a, a Soviet iteration of Carl Zeiss design. Uh, this one manufactured in 1979, not an MC Jupiter 37A, which might potentially hurt it as on paper, the MC Jupiter 37A did have a slightly higher res uh, resolution or resolving power, but certainly still coded and we'll see how it does as it was a more modern design than the Jupiter 11. Tamron, so the Tamron F2.8 135mm Tamron, again, it's they're a good manufacturer and they, they were and they still are. And you can see that in the photos from the Tamron. Yeah, there's a bit, bit of chromatic aberration. F2.8 itself is, you know, not very pretty, uh, but once you stop it down, you definitely get some good resolving power here. And last but, well, potentially least, is the Hanamex 70 to 140 zoom. Uh, when you combine a not particularly well-renowned manufacturer with an early zoom, this is what you get. It is very muddy, low contrast, low resolution, and uh, I can reveal now that the Hanamex zoom unfortunately scored the lowest of the bunch. So what happens when we put all of these lenses together? Well, it's very interesting. I am happy to say that the winner of the resolution contest today of all of these six 135mm equivalent lenses is actually the earliest lens of the lot, the Jupiter 11. And uh, well, that is very impressive to me. This one was manufactured in 1968 and the proof is in the pudding. You can see here on the tests of the Jupiter 11 that it just out resolves the other lenses. It has fantastic resolution uh, in the center of the frame. It has great resolution towards the edges of the frame, but more importantly, uh, it really doesn't suffer from that chromatic aberration um, that, that axial chromatic aberration that lots of these other 135 mils seem to suffer for, uh, seem to suffer from. Um, and that's really what helps it maintain its resolution on, you know, some of those challenging contrasting edges, particularly towards the corners of the frame where, you know, say the Tamron might start to fall apart a little bit. And even the Jupiter 37A was very close to the Jupiter 11. Uh, did manage the second highest sharpness score of the lot. So I think second place has to go the, to the Jupiter 37A for achieving that second highest sharpness. Uh, but even that, you know, you can see some, uh, it's a pretty close competition between the Jupiter 37A and the Jupiter 11. But the Jupiter 11 still just uh, pips it at the post. Um, and I think what you can really uh, infer from these results as well is that it's not just the lens's design that plays a part in its final sharpness. You know, we're in 2022 now. These lenses were made 40 or so years ago. Um, and over time, you know, lenses, maybe the elements get a little bit loose. Maybe they uh, they need a little bit of recalibration, a little bit of care. But also these lenses came out of the factory um, with varying levels of quality control, particularly Soviet lenses, of course. But uh, it was noted down in Soviet documentation uh, that uh, they actually did some tests on, OK, well, what happens if we, you know, miss if a factory worker misaligns, you know, one of these tricky elements towards say the back of the Jupiter 37A and you know they tested that and it was found of course a lot of the time that a tiny little error in some designs um, would mean a lot more than an error in others and I'm not sure if that is exactly why the Jupiter 11 has stood the test of time but uh, uh, what is for sure is that this copy of the Jupiter 11 my copy thankfully is a very good example. 
and uh, really shows what it can do. So guys, there you go. That was a very quick little video today showcasing uh, some of the capabilities of all of these lenses. Needless to say, uh, don't get yourself a Hanamec Zoom 70 to 140. They are trash. Um, I might try and do a few more uh, videos like this focused on some uh, earlier, not necessarily Soviet lenses. So let me know what you want to see in the comments down below. Remember to uh, yeah, like this video, subscribe to Soviet Lens Reviews for more. But till the next time, I'll see you then.